Welcome to HortTube. In this video, we're gonna be moving this uh, Snow Joey Viburnum to a new home in a neighbor's garden, uh, actually a garden project we've been working on for a little while. It's kind of out of place in our Raleigh garden at this point. Uh, we had been waiting to get the siding uh, repaired on the house and a few other projects, and we're actually painting the foundation here in the ne this next week. Uh, and then we're gonna be working on the foundation project up here. This Snow Joey Viburnum, you can see in just three years, uh, it's already, it's tall, it's seven feet tall and probably six and a half feet wide. It's just overgrowing this kind of small lot here. I could move it over to the edge and use it as a screening plant for sure. Uh, or I could back it up onto the foundation and use it as a corner piece back here. There's some options here in this garden, but we got the perfect place uh, over on another project that we're working on. Uh, I'm unfortunately gonna be sacrificing some flowers on this thing. Uh, it's just the time of year I'm doing this, late winter, early spring. It is actually budded up super early this year. Everything seems to be wanting to flower uh, kind of crazy early uh, this, this season. But that, that's life. Sometimes you have to sacrifice flowers in order to, uh, to move something. Uh, if you haven't done any digging in your, yard, in your garden since you moved into the house, you might want to call uh, 811. You might, you might, you might want to get the, uh, all the lines marked in your garden. We have overhead electric, overhead internet. Uh, water runs a different direction than this. So we kind of know where all of our underground utilities are before you start digging something out like this, where you're going to have to dig a little deeper. Like if you were, if this had only been in the ground for a year, uh, it, I'd probably be able to pop it out barely bigger than when I had planted it. But at this point and as vigorous as it's been, it's going to be a, a fairly good size uh, hole. I'm gonna reduce the size of it. I think that's pretty important uh, to do. Here in the South, we could do this fall or late winter, early spring. Uh, probably in more Northern areas, you'd wanna do this just now, you know, late winter, early spring. Uh, it's not, it shouldn't be that hard after only three years uh, to get this out of the ground. It will have rooted more than one year, uh, but it still should be fairly reasonable uh, to get it out again i've got to reduce the size of it and today's part of the project is to uh root prune it so i'm going to root prune it and wait a few days before i actually pull it the rest of the way out of the ground and truck it uh, over to the neighbor's garden had some 70 year old azaleas on the front foundation here we've been taking out and i got the last stump out this morning and when i'm removing stuff when i'm removing something to dispose of it uh, I'll chop down on the side and then I take a very low angle up under the plant because uh, I, I want to leave as much of the soil in place. This thing will be a little different. I'll want to get down uh, you know, a hair deeper uh, and wider and get as much material out as I can. So there's enough talking. I've got some loppers. Uh, again, this thing has grown a lot. These are pretty thick branches on this thing. You need to make sure that the tool you're using is adequate to cut them with, with ease. When you're using a, a, set of, a pair of pruners, it should be fairly easy to go through whatever you're using. If, you're, if it's this, you're probably damaging the tool that you're using. You're probably damaging the stem that you're cutting. Uh, and you, you need to step up in size to a larger lopper or a larger hand pruner or whatever it is. Uh, but it should be that I come in here and it just should snap right off. Okay, I main re one of the other reasons uh, to, to do this massive pruning that I'm about to do on it, which is gonna look bad, but it's not gonna hurt it. Uh, is so that I can get down here. I mean, there is just no way. This thing's gotten so wide. There is no way I'm getting into the middle of this thing to actually dig it out without doing some surgery on it. You don't have to reduce something as much as I'm gonna reduce this. Uh, this time of year, um, it's, not a very, it's not a super stressful time of year to be moving something. But the fact that I'm putting it in the truck, uh, I want to reduce, and I'm already cutting the flowers off of it anyway. I might as well just go ahead and reduce it to a size that's going to allow me to handle it more easily. But we're not doing any real, I'm not doing any real damage to it. Light will get down into the middle of it now, and it'll actually likely end up being fuller. That last limb was on the verge of my pruners being slightly too small. That one was about an inch in diameter. I 
this <laughs> this is the kind of thing right here though if i leave these kind of spiky things right here when i'm digging around this thing they're going to uh they're not going to be fun <laughs> so i need to either come in here and cut them closer to the stem uh which i need to do anyway but uh, keep that in mind. All of this right here is going to be painful. <laughs> if it's sticking out way away from the from the main branch, uh, it will not be, you know, the way I'm going to have to handle it and manipulate it. I don't want to be stabbed while I'm doing it. The way, as fast as this thing grows a year from now, it'll be, I won't even know we did this in all likelihood over in its new home. Uh, one other thing we'll do is we'll go over to the other property and go ahead and dig the hole uh, so that this thing is out of the ground as little as possible. We want to get it back into its new home as quick as we possibly can. Just, again, you, it's all about limiting the amount of stress something is under. Of course, we've got other plants in here super close. That. Well, this is a very different plant this was another option for us uh, to buy a couple of more seasons with this plant in this spot. If I, you know, again, I'm putting things behind it, so it'd be weird for me to leave something this big in front of it. But if I, if it had just slightly outgrown the space, uh, I, you know, I could reset prune it like this, uh, really hard prune it, and that would give me a couple more years probably to leave it here, you know, with it returning to about this height uh, over that time. One of the main there are obviously a lot of reasons why you wouldn't do this during the summer. It's much more stressful. Uh, you know, it's, it's hot outside. It's going to use water quicker than the root, the remaining roots that I'm going to damage can bring water back up. But another thing that could happen is by taking this top layer off like this, these leaves that are down in the center have never seen the sun. And if I did this when the sun is up on a higher angle later in the spring or early summer, it will fry every leaf on the top of this plant. It's probably not a long-term issue uh, but initially it would do that i would never cut a conifer in all likelihood there's probably very few conifers i would cut like this just leafy plants are way more receptive to being cut like this and will respond well i would probably back the clock up if i was moving a conifer try to get maybe i'd shear it a little bit um, but i'd try to get the biggest root ball i could on it and not you know with this now that i've reduced the size of this if i'm not getting I want to get a big root ball, but if I don't, for whatever reason, I dig in here and this thing just doesn't have a lot of roots on it uh, that come out easily or will come out at all, you know, reducing the size of it will put it back in balance from that, uh, from that root damage. I think that's, I think that's it. I'm going to, again, just go around uh, the base of it and there's some rocks, some leftover blocks that were part of the, uh, there was a foundation wall that went a wall that went around these foundation beds right here that we've taken out recently. So there's some concrete here from that. I do not want to be slamming my, uh, you can take, I've got a rake over here too. It's one of the other tools I brought over here for this, but I'm going to use my uh, shovel. I have irrigation line. This is another thing that you'll want to know in your garden. If you have some sort of irrigation, uh, drip irrigation or, uh, even overhead irrigation where those lines run. Even if you're paying somebody to put it in, make sure, try to draw some map of it at the time that they're draw, putting it in or ask them to make some sort of rough map of it so that when you start doing these projects in the future, you're not damaging your irrigation system and creating work for yourself. Typically, I wanna go about out to the drip line. The drip line of this plant was here <laughs> and that would be a very, very weighty amount of material i also don't think any of this uh this loose really rich uh, improved soil would actually stay on that root ball anyway so i'm going to come in a little bit closer somewhere right about there and all i'm going to do is take that shovel put it in the ground and then pull back on it i, ha I have this trenching shovel and i actually have a new one uh, this one is the one i've had for a long time but it has over time this little notch has cut into it here it started out as a little bit of a point I've used it so long that this little, this little pocket right here formed and it really does a great job of cutting roots. And so that's uh, the main reason I'm using this older one is it will go right down through and slice these roots. And this is what I figured. Our soil has been improved so much with using wood chips and other things that I can stick a shovel pretty easily down in here. And so all I'm doing today is cutting some surface roots 
a few months in advance if you want to. The hope is, is that by cutting these roots around this edge like this, that I'll get some new root growth to occur in the center of this root ball that I'm creating. We've got, um, there was a maple out here in this front garden that still is haunting us now. I will definitely find roots from it during this process and have to cut those. I got the circle cut around it and you know, I can put this under here and pull back and you can see the top of the plant moving just a bit. That's about where I wanna be. I've got those kind of surface roots cut, but I don't have the, the slightly deeper roots cut uh, at this point. I'm hoping again, those sur surface roots will maybe form a little bit of new growth toward the middle over the next week or two before I actually pull this thing out of the ground. Some of the other reasons, uh, some of the reasons you might be moving a plant. I mean, there's all, there, there's all kinds of reasons. Maybe you put it in too much shade. Maybe you have it in too much sun and you're seeing it, um, you know, not perform well. One of the main reasons I've dug up uh, plants in the past is just because they lacked vigor, right? So you, you planted them in two or three years later, for some reason it just hadn't grown. Uh, and maybe, you know, other ones you had noticed had grown much quicker, or other things in your garden had grown much quicker. And so the assumption may be that they were planted too low or planted in a w too wet of a space, something like that. So, for, you know, I'll go and either raise them up sometimes, or just replant them back in the same spot or just figure a better spot. There's probably a better spot in the garden where I could have them planted. And then there's the, the what this one was, which was actually too vigorous uh, for the spot that we had it in. I had hoped to kind of maintain it around four or five feet for some period of time, but it, it just blows through that really quickly. In order for me to get the flowers and the, the uh, beautiful kind of fruit that that becomes in the fall and the beautiful winter color, I don't want to be pruning on it all the time. So I'm going to, if we're going to take it to a place where it can really uh, do what it does, which is this kind of a four season, beautiful uh, viburnum that the snow joey is. So that's where we'll pick up next. So a couple weeks have passed since I came out here and cut this viburnum back and root pruned it. So now it's time to get it out of the ground. And I'm gonna tell you that for all, every plant I've ever transplanted, it never came out of the ground like I had in my mind. I think when, when we plant these shrubs they're in three or five or seven gallon containers, whatever size you bought it as. It has this kind of perfect uniform root mass, right? And when you put it in the ground, you expect that all those roots would have done the same thing in time. That's not the way it works in the ground. This thing will have taken off whichever direction it could take off and root in the easiest. So if there's root competition over here, it may have been easier to go that way. So me dig, I'm digging this perfect circle around here like there's some sort of perfect circle of roots and there's just not. Uh, most of the roots, it, and it appears as I was cutting them, the vast majority of roots, um, for whatever reason, had taken off that direction, probably away from these old 80-year-old azaleas that were over here and the maple roots that had rooted all through these front beds um, out here. So again, when you're digging it up, it's not gonna go like you, thought, like you think it's gonna go. I use this trenching shovel uh, one of the main reasons I use this trenching shovel is not only because it's easier to put it in, get into the ground, and I've got this little kind of root cutter here. You can also get one of those root slayer shovels. Works pretty well for this to cut roots. I also like the angle of this shovel, and I could not find another one for a long time. I finally did, uh, and I'll, I'll link it down below if you're interested in, in getting one of these. But this angle was one of the reasons I liked this shovel. Some of them have more, will have more of an angle or less of an angle, but this one, when I put it in the ground, it just slides under that plant. Uh, and it made transplanting plants so much easier. Is it, it just, it's like literally dropping the shovel straight down. It will slide directly under that. You see how that works? So I like the, again, I just like the angle of this one. It just works really well for transplanting plants. I'll go through here and loosen this one more time. It's rooted in, but it hasn't, it's only three years. So it's just not, um, it's not overly difficult to get this one out of the ground. I've certainly had much, much worse. This thing sits here for another three years. It'll be a bear to get out. And it's okay to take breaks from this, okay? I don't have to do all this in a day, right? This is, 
I could go out here and loosen this thing up like I'm doing right now and then take a break from it for a day. Come back out here tomorrow. One other thing we wanna think about here is moistening the soil. I had some rain the other day, so I'm, I'm not thinking about watering it today. But before you root prune it initially, I should have said, you probably wanna water it in. And before you then dig it out, you wanna water it in. You want it moist, not super wet though. We wanna be able to work with it uh, without it being just swampy. So if you do water it extremely well, maybe wait a day or two before you go back in and, uh, and dig it out. But you can see how much I've loosened it up at this point. And that shovel does such a good job of going pretty much all the way under at the right at the angle that I want it to and I just don't feel hardly any resistance left underneath it okay so I'm going to try to pull I'll just grab something very sturdy on it and try to pull back a bit on it and see kind of where I'm at there's definitely something in there that still wants to to fight me a bit And I'll go back from the other angle, do the same thing. Okay, I don't want to, it's really from this side over here where my problem is. I cut this viburnum back severely before I root pruned it. You may find that if you didn't cut it back really hard and then you have some regret about that when you're trying to dig it out because it's all in your face and everything, um, you can still cut it back. You can still prune it. You can make that decision, you know, even at the last minute. I um, feel like I'm like one root away from having this dug completely out. And it might be done. It might actually be done at this point. Okay, all right. So the best thing to do at this point is to just put a tarp down next to it and then just slide it over onto the tarp and then just pull that tarp wherever you're going if you're transplanting it in your own garden. If you can find a path that makes sense, um, that's the easiest way. By picking it up and putting it in something and then dumping it back out later, you're gonna knock more and more soil off of it every, time you sit, every single time you move it around. So ideally, that's what we would do. We're taking it to someone else's house so we are going to put it in this little low wheelbarrow that Steph found on the side of the road um, and uh, it has been it's become our main workhorse here in the garden in Raleigh uh, let's see I'm going to I'm gonna to go to the low side of it and uh, I'm hoping I'm just sliding this thing in here I do not know you're gonna need you're gonna need help on something that's got any size to it um, you know it's it's this is this root ball is not light okay but i get enough of it up in this cart and there we go it's out and i've got a good a good enough root ball i probably would like to have had it a little bit more We've worked on this soil so much over the last three or four years that now <laughs> there, there's like this, if this was sol still solid clay, I would have probably been able to get a bigger root ball out of there without it falling apart. But this soil now has gone from solid clay to really loose kind of a loam soil. So a lot, you know, I lose a lot of soil that I would have probably rather kept on this root ball. But there we are, we're in business. We're gonna put it in the back of the truck and uh, move over to where it's going. Now you will have potentially created a giant hole in your garden. A couple things on this. Uh, number one, you're probably, well, probably gonna get root suckers from that. Since I didn't get all the roots out over the next month or two, I'm sure little suckers are gonna try to pop up out of the ground and it's gonna try to regrow in place. I'll keep an eye on those. I'll just come through my shovel and chop them off as I see them. Don't let them get too established. If you do, then they're gonna be able to rebuild the root system back up under here really quickly. The other thing is, this hole that I've created, all the water in this garden is gonna to try to run to that spot, right? Water's always gonna to try to find the lowest place. I would not, I would definitely not recommend filling this hole with a bunch of organic material. So if you went and got a big, you know, some sort of 
planting soil or whatever the heck they're calling it, some, some bag of black material that you got from the box store or whatever. I wouldn't dump anything like that in here because it's just gonna be a sponge uh, for all that water that's trying to make it to the low spot. So it, as much as you can, try to feather in the surrounding area. If you have any high spots uh, anywhere, try to fill as much of this hole in as you possibly can with your existing soil in your own garden. Try to get that as much as possible, just feathered all back in here. Uh, and then if you need to, at that point, put something near the top, that would be fine. But um, ultimately, I'd rather not fill that big giant hole in with some sort of organic material. It's gonna become a very wet spot in the garden. I keep a shade cloth in the truck. It's actually been in this truck since I've owned this truck. It's 23 years old. Uh, and this shade cloth has been in the back of it the entire time. Same thing with my, uh, my ramps. Yeah, just quick and easy to cover anything I'm transporting. I cut so much foliage off of this. There's almost nothing to burn uh, at this point. And I wasn't going very far, but you know, that, that shade cloth is, a, is a, it's something you should have if you're going to buy plants in an open truck. You know, just be thinking about you know cu covering them up. But the ramps and the uh, and the shade cloth being back there always make these kind of jobs simple and easy. Before the plant that you're transplanting actually comes out of the ground, it's best to go ahead and have that hole that you're moving it to approximately dug. You're never gonna get this completely right. You're gonna have to work around it some. I use, just in the field, I always used, you know, the tools to quickly measure things. So I can come across the top of this root ball, see about how wide, you know, that is with my thumb there, come down, match that up to the hole here, and realize that I'm not quite as wide uh, as the root ball I dug. I can do the same thing. I can do the same thing on the depth of it. So I, I dig the hole approximately, and then I get the thing over here and realize I haven't dug quite enough or I've dug way too much. I, I don't, because of the weight of some of these root balls and the fact that every single time I handle it, I'm knocking some of the soil off of it. Uh, I want to get it slid in here as close as possible and only be making little micro, little, little small changes. Maybe one side's a little too low. I can pick up on it, shove a little soil under it, whatever. Uh, but I know I'm just a little bit, I'm a little bit narrow. The spot this is going is uh, at a friend's house and we're gonna, during this year, be putting in kind of a mixed border screen in some of this uh, back garden space. Uh, if you follow the channel for any length of time, we've done a ton of landscaping here and I'm do, uh, uh, you'll, see, you'll, see this, you'll, you'll see this place um, many times again in the future. I've got a pretty shallow root ball that one, you know, in our clay-based soil here in Raleigh, things tend not to be able to root super deep. And so most of the roots on this thing had gone out wider. In fact, it's probably a slightly shallower root ball than when I originally put it in the ground. There's just no air, not a lot going on deep down in the soil here. This clay, I have a little bit of pine bark soil conditioner and I'm gonna dump a bit of that it's, a, it's some compost from the house mixed with a little bit of a pine bark soil conditioner. You don't have to amend your soil. If you're picking the right plants for your area uh, and the soil types you have, you don't really have to amend the soil. I, I, I need to say that occasionally. Uh, I think uh, because so many things are being tried to, people are trying to sell things to us, uh, it looks like uh, the perception would be that you need all these bagged materials to plant all these things and maintain all these things. You don't necessarily need it. In our clay-based soils, I find a little bit of pine bark soil conditioner, which is the same things these plants are grown in when they're in the containers, mixed in with that clay, works wonders. If I didn't have it, maybe a shovel or two of compost. If I didn't have it, and nothing at all. I'd probably end up with similar results 
uh, regardless. Um, but I do know it makes people feel better to dump a big black bag or something in the, into the hole. Most of the time it's unnecessary and in this clay, too much of a good thing can actually, we can actually end up overwatering our plants and loving them to death. This cart should make this easy for me just to kind of stand it up and slide it right into the hole. I do want to think about what's front and what's back uh, a bit. Um, I'm going to turn it just a hair. so that there's not a branch just going straight back to this fence right away. Uh, that's really the only thing I'm gonna look for. And I think that's kind of perfect. What I ultimately want is for nothing that was, if it wasn't buried at the house, I don't wanna bury it now. So all the wood that's sticking up above the ground down here, you can see it's nice and clean. The root flare, you can see the bottom of the root flare on this plant where it's getting a little bit wider before the roots start. If I lay my shovel across this, you can see that I'm pretty level with just how it came out of the ground. Pretty lucky guess. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. There's a, it's pretty rare that you're going to, uh, to nail one just like that. If I had it a little deep, deep is the most concerning. Uh, if I had it too deep, what eventually would happen is things would wash in around this root flare and bear it, you know, end up burying it like this. Uh, which is not ideal. Uh, so a little high would be okay or pretty much flush with where this one came out of the ground from the house. If I'm planting a new plant, I'll leave everything up just a bit. This was initially planted fairly high in our garden, but at this transplanting time here, I just want it flush with everything around it. And then I've got this clay and bark mix here. I'll just mix up real quick. There are air pockets under here you know, see that where my shovel's disappearing under there? I need to try to settle some of this material in there. Uh, and what we'll do is put this all the way around it and then I'll come back and sh actually shake this viburnum a bit. Try to get all these, some of these larger roots out of here. I'm not worried about every root and every rock. The plants don't care. We care more than the plants do about all that kind of stuff. Okay, but I can, I can shake this a bit uh, and try to, try to get some of that to settle under those roots a bit. This was, this was easier than this goes sometimes. It was easier pulling this plant out of the ground because it was only three years old. And the spot I've dug here, I found a, an easier spot to dig in this particular garden, which is normally full of roots. I have <laughs> made out easy doing a transplanting video here. All of this could be a little harder than this. The, now what I wanna do is get a water hose over here and really water this in well and get all of this material to settle in around it. Cutting this viburnum back allowed me to see down into the interior of it. And it has a couple of crossing branches that I'd actually like to cut out of here. There's one right here, you can see. It just comes, comes from there, comes directly across this larger branch. Eventually, it's gonna cause a problem uh, in there. There's a couple of them that I, need to, that I need to cut out. So we'll get rid of that one. Uh, and then this piece down below it, I need to use a smaller pair of hand pruners. And then I got a slightly larger one here that is doing the same exact thing and I want to be careful not to cut the, the main oh that was good that was a really good lucky cut there uh, there's another another crossing branch and I can go down here and cut this a little bit lower uh, but I want to make sure that while I'm in here I can take the opportunity to prevent any future problems from happening on this plant I've been able to do this entire job with just my trenching shovel uh, you may find, again, that root slayer shovel may be a good idea if you have a lot of roots in your, in your garden. Uh, I also have, I have this pickmatic with me the entire time. The one side of them, of the, uh, of the, mat, the matic end is good for cutting roots. If you had other roots running through it or you needed to cut a main root on one of these plants, as long as you're reducing the size of it, you can cut, you know, bigger roots. Uh, but that matic may be helpful and then the pick sometimes can be helpful uh, when I'm digging something out of the ground, I can slide the pick underneath it 
and then kind of pull back on it just a bit and that way maybe or have somebody help you pull back on it a bit and then you can slide the shovel under the plant just a little bit easier but again we want when we're watering something in and packing soil around it be careful not to over compact the soil it's really easy to do this time of year as i'm doing this in march the soil tends to be a little wetter and it's really easy to just kind of stomp something to death and stomp all the air out of it so we want i want soil settled around these roots all those little pockets you know that that were created here and i want to water it in really well and then put a little bit more soil where it settles maybe stomp it down with my foot just a bit you know not my full weight uh, all the way around it a few times water it again see if anything settles maybe give it a shake like this to see what's happening you'll feel it really get firmer after you do this a few times and then you can pull whatever your mulch is back into place she happens to have a ton of pine trees back here so in the meantime we're just going to use what she has got this vinca a vinca major over here creeping in to this section so we're hoping at some point here to be able to create a barrier because this entire lot is one of the issues with landscaping this lot is similar to ours where we have bermuda grass on one side creeping charlie on another and english ivy on another and you know we're just constantly uh, defending it but anyway this is the beginning of the defense for over here is to put some sort of bed in where we can have a defendable uh, kind of space but again just once this thing's completely settled back in watered in well you feel like it's firmed in enough you know get your mulch around it without again we're just trying not to bury anything that was buried that, that wasn't buried before uh, and i think it looks like looks fine we did this we did this when this thing was about to flower so you know it cost us the flowers it's still got a few flower buds on it but we also did it at a very low stress time of year right so it was early in the season it's less stressful on me because it's only 55 degrees or something out here this morning uh, and less stressful on the plant because it was only 55 degrees out here this morning uh, and so overall this thing should settle in beautifully uh, we've reduced the size to compensate for the root damage and now it should just fill in really quickly I don't, I don't think there'd be any issue no reason whatsoever why this thing won't thrive not all plants go this easy as this one does there's some some are much more difficult and i've lost things in the process it's possible you know that you're you know all the soil is going to fall off of it it just doesn't have a lot of roots on it uh, because their soil had stayed too wet there's all kinds of conceivable things or it's just impossible to get it out without butchering it to the point of it's not going to transplant well but this one all things went well there you go uh, snow joey viburnum in its new home